Hi, little friends. I have one last story that I would love to read to you as we end our time in kindergarten together. And um, I'm out here in my yard with the trees and the hills behind me. So you might hear the sound of the waterfall or um, my kids playing in the yard behind me or the birds or the squirrels or the who knows, the dog might even bark. I mean, let's be honest. Um, but I wanted to do this outside because the book I have for you is about an acorn and an oak tree. And it's about being who God makes us to be and not worrying too much about what everyone else thinks we should be or trying to be like everyone else. It's important that you are who God made you to be. And as you grow and you go on in school and you get to be an adult, you might wonder what God has for you. And I want you to remember that you are to be who God's made you to be and to keep searching out who God is making you to be. Not who you were before, but who he's growing you into. And I know that God's doing a great work in each of your lives. So um, the sun's kind of coming in and out and in and out. So I'm gonna try to not be too squinty today. Um, and I wanna share this book with you. It's a little bit of a longer book. Um, so snuggle in, um, maybe grab mom or dad to sit and listen with you. Um, and here is my story. It's called The Oak Inside the Acorn and it's by Max Lucado. And what I've actually done inside this book is every year that I read it, I write the class that I read it to. So you guys are my 13th class to read this book to at the end of the school year. And this is my hope and my prayer for you as well. So it goes like this. The acorn looked at the world around him and green hills rolled their backs in the distance. Bright daisies bloomed below him. And above him, a family of puffy white clouds floated through the blue sky. The world looked so big, the little acorn said to his mother, I'm just glad to be right here with you. Do you see here's our little tiny acorn right there he's hanging out with his mama seems like a good place to be his mother was tall a beautiful oak tree i'm glad too my little acorn it's good for you to be here with me now but when your time comes to go into the world you'll be just fine i'll be afraid mother oak hugged little acorn in her strong branches within you is a great oak little acorn just be the tree god made you to be the thought of letting go and leaving the safety of his mother's branches was scary to little acorn, so he tried not to think about it. But deep down inside, he knew his time was coming. One by one, his brothers and sisters had been letting go and saying goodbye. They had been afraid too, but their mother had assured them with the same words. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. And each time he heard this, little acorn would look at himself and say, an oak in me? He was so small, it was hard for him to believe that he could ever be a tree. The time to let go came sooner than Linda Acorn wanted. It started with a bump. He was resting on one summer afternoon, thankful for the coolness in the shadow of the leaves, when thud, the tree shook. His mother's branches trembled and little acorn began to swing back and forth and back and forth, and a farmer's pickup had accidentally backed into the tree trunk. Little acorn had swung before, stirred by the wind, bumped by climbing kids, and each time he'd always held on, but not this time. He tried. He pressed his thin stem into the branch as hard as he could, but it didn't work. He was heavier than he used to be, and his stem began to pull away from the branch. Uh-oh, Mom! It's okay, little acorn, Mother Oak assured him. You can't hang on forever. It's time. You've got to let go. Down he fell, flipping over and over, softly slipping through the leaves until he bounced on something hard. He had landed in the back of a pickup truck. The truck vibrated and began to drive away. It's okay, little acorn, his mama called out. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. Little acorn barely heard the last few words. The truck was already moving down the road, going somewhere. He just didn't know where. Hmm. As the truck bounced, so did the acorn. Ouch, he said, this is rough. Oh, it gets better, he heard a voice say. And rolling over, little acorn looked up at a young tree. Who are you, he asked. Oh, I'm a new little orange tree on my way to be planted. What do orange trees do, he asked the acorn. And by now the road and the ride were much smoother. Well, we grow oranges, 
Oh, answered the acorn. He didn't know what an orange was and was just about to ask when the truck slowed to a stop. Wow, exclaimed the orange tree who was tall enough to see out of the truck. What is it? Asked the acorn. Trees, orange trees everywhere. It's an orange grove. Hmm. Okay, little orange tree, it's time for you to be planted, the farmer said as he lowered the truck tailgate and climbed out into the back into the back of the truck. The acorn rolled away just in time to avoid the farmer's big boot. The farmer took the tree and was gone for a long time. Little acorn stared at the sky as it began to darken. He missed his mother oak and her strong branches. This would be his first night away from her. That might be scary. The tailgate banged and the farmer jumped in. A quick sweep, he said, and I'm headed home. Little acorn had never seen a broom and he barely saw this one before it sent him high in the air and he landed in some soft dirt. Oops. I wondered what happened to you. It was Orange Tree. Little Acorn was happy to hear a familiar voice. Is this your new home? Oh, it sure is, Orange Tree said, and it looks like it's your home too. Little Acorn had one more question. Orange Tree, what do I do next? Orange Tree's voice was sleepy. Just settle in, little friend, and rest. God will make you grow. And so little acorn did just that. He rested that night, the next day, that week, the next month. There in the soft soil surrounded by orange trees, he sank deeper and deeper into the ground and slumbered. And he slept a long, long time. Do you see him there next to his orange tree friend? When little acorn awoke, woke, he didn't know where he was. He stretched upward and when he did, he kept stretching higher and higher until he popped out of the dark dirt into the sunlight. Well. Look who's awake, announced Orange Tree, and little acorn looked around and then up. Oh, hello, Orange Tree. H have I been sleeping long? Well, long enough to become a small tree. Little acorn looked down at himself and said, oh, I've changed. His round shell was now a slender trunk. You're growing up, Orange Tree said. Now you're a little oak. Little oak straightened himself and remembered his mother's words. Within you is a great oak. Maybe she was right, he thought, and he stood a little bit taller. You see him right here next to the orange tree? He's a little tree now. But even at his tallest, he was much smaller than the big orange trees. Their bushy branches grew greener and greener, and then one day, Orange Tree called out to his friend, Little Oak, look, my first orange! The big orange tree spoke up. He'll have many more, they said. So will I! announced Little Oak. The trees in the grove just laughed. They didn't mean to hurt Little Oak's feelings, but they did. You'll never have oranges, they said laughing. Little Oak straightened his branches and he pushed as hard as he could, but no oranges popped out. Not that day, not the next, not the next. Think for a second. Can an oak tree grow oranges? Probably not. God didn't make oak trees to grow oranges. When the farmer came to collect the fruit, Little Oak was worried. He had none to give. Well, hello, Little Oak, the farmer greeted. How'd you get here? The farmer walked away, and when he returned, he carried a big shovel. I know just the place for you. He lifted the new Little Oak tree out of the ground. Bye-bye, my friend, said Orange Tree. There's the farmer. He's going to plant him somewhere else. I wonder. I bet that farmer knows a good place for him. The farmer didn't take Little Oak too far away. He carried him out of the grove to his big white house. The farmer chose a spot in the backyard overlooking the orange grove. Let's see how you do here, he said. Then he dug a deep hole and set Little Oak inside it. He placed dirt around Little Oak and pressed it tightly to the tree's roots. Little Oak liked his new home, and for the first time, he stood taller than almost everything around him. Little Oak was stretching his roots into the dirt when he heard, Hi, I'm Pink Petunia. Who are you? Little Oak looked at the bright flower near the house. He started to answer, but Pink Petunia didn't give him time. Rosie's next to the house. Hi there, chirped Rosie. Daisy's here too. That's me, said a white and yellow flower. Hello, little tree. Pink Petunia continued, We're soft and smell sweet. What about you? Little Oak didn't know how to answer. He knew he had no oranges. 
Do you grow flowers? Pink Petunia asked. Little Oak never remembered seeing flowers like roses or petunias on his mother, but still maybe oaks did grow flowers. Maybe I could. Maybe that's what I'm made to do, he answered. So he tried as hard as he could. Little Oak tried to grow flowers like his friends could grow and the sun grew hotter. They unfolded into a rainbow of pinks and reds and yellows. Little Oak, however, just grew taller. As the days grew longer, his roots grew deeper, and every day he tried to grow colorful flowers, but he never could. Pink Petunia could, so could Rosie, so could Daisy, but not Little Oak. Do you think he's meant to grow flowers? Did God make him to do that? I don't think so. Finally, Little Oak decided to rest. His branches were tired and drooping, his leaves were dro dro dropping, and even the flowers were sleepy. We're gonna rest now, little oak, the flowers told him, and they did. The sky grayed and the days shortened and the whole garden slept. And while little oak slept, he dreamed. He dreamed of his days as a little acorn on his mother's branch. And deep in his sleep, he heard her soft voice. Within you is a great oak. Just be the tree God made you to be. So there you go, he's kinda sleeping. When the sun warmed his branches, little Oak awoke, only he wasn't so little anymore. He could see further and he had grown taller and wider and the winds didn't bend him as much. His branches were big, as big as his trunk used to be and little Oak was becoming big Oak. Many years passed and each year he grew bigger and wider, wider and bigger until everything in the farmer's yard looked up to him. Looks like maybe there's somebody else who's growing up in this house. So look, here's when you just read the pictures. There's this, and then this, and then this, and then this. Now Orange Tree and the flowers called him Big Oak. He spread his big branches and looked around. Orange Tree was taller too, but not as tall as Big Oak. Big Oak was taller than all of his friends and they were wide, but not as wide as Big Oak. He was the tallest. He was the widest, but he still wondered what he was supposed to do. He couldn't grow oranges or flowers. He just grew bigger and he didn't know why. There he is. Big Oak was just awakening from a long winter's nap, his leaves tiny buds, when a young farmer brought two ropes and tied them to one of his strong branches. Close by, a little girl watched. Hmm, I wonder what ropes would be. Rosie was puzzled. What's it for, Big Oak? I don't know, Big Oak answered, but he soon found out. Can I do it, Daddy? Can I swing? Go ahead, urged the man, and the little girl with bright blue eyes and hair the color of Daisy's flowers sat in the swing. Big Oak felt the tug, but barely. He was strong and little girl was small, and with her daddy's help, she swung forward. Not too far, but further the next day, and further the next seems like he would be a great tree for a swing like that. By the time the sun was hot and the flowers were plenty, she could swing alone, kicking her feet higher and higher until she could see the roof of her house. Then back she would swing, back until she seemed to look straight at the ground. Big Oak loved the sound of the little girl's laughter. Her footsteps were running towards him, her squeals of delight as she swung higher and higher in the sky. Yes, Big Oak loved little girl. When she swung, he stood strong. And when her daddy built her a tree house in Big Oak's branches, Big Oak gladly held it. And when little girl stretched out on the grass to watch the clouds float, Big Oak shaded her. She played in his branches, climbed his trunk, rested in his shadow, and together they grew. Each year both taller, each year both stronger. And when gray skies brought cold days, Big Oak slept and the swing hung silent and the playhouse, it stayed empty. But when blue skies brought warm days, they laughed and played. Little girl talked and he listened. And at last Big Oak knew he had become the tree God meant him to be. Look at those great pictures. Looks like fun, huh? One day, little girl came to Big Oak with a little boy, though neither was too little. They sat on his branches and talked and Big Oak held them both. And when they carved their names on his trunk, he didn't really mind. Little boy pushed the swing and little girl laughed and Big Oak protected them from the sudden rainstorms. And in time, little girl didn't swing so much. And when she climbed into the tree, how she sat more, and she played less. Little girl 
was becoming big girl. Someday, someday that will be you. Big Girl now stood as tall as Big Oak's lowest branch, and one day Rosie Rose said to Big Oak, she's growing up, Big Oak. She'll soon leave. Big Oak didn't answer, but he understood. Big Girl spent many blue sky days sitting on the ground, leaning back against Big Oak's trunk and watching the clouds drift by. Big Oak knew Big Girl had a big question on her mind because she said things like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be, and it's hard to let go, and how can I know who I am? Big Oak wanted to talk to Big Girl. He knew just what to say. Remember, he had some of those questions too when he was a little acorn. He would say, within you is a great girl. Just be the person God made you to be. Kinder and friends, within you is a great person. Just be the person God made you to be. Orange trees grow oranges, he would continue. Flower plants grow flowers, and oaks, oaks grow tall enough for swings and strong enough for swinging and big enough to hold little girls until they become big girls. He wanted to, but he couldn't say the words. Trees don't talk in this story. One day, Big Girl was so sad. The little girl who used to giggle in Big Oak's shade just sat, silent tears flowing down her cheeks. It's hard to let go, she said. Big Oak was listening and he had an idea. He looked down his branch at a little acorn. I have a special job for you, Big Oak said. So you can see there's some acorns on the tree branches right up here, on Big Oak's branches. The next time the wind blew his branches, Big Oak let this branch shake more than the others. The little acorn popped loose and landed in Big Girl's lap. Big Girl picked it up and started to toss it away, but she stopped. She held a little acorn in her hand and stared at it. She turned and looked up at Big Oak. Were you ever this small? Answering her own question, she continued, of course you were. You grew into a great oak from a little acorn. All you did was become what God made you to be. She looked again at the acorn, then back at the tree. Her eyes brightened. Do you suppose that's what God wants me to do? Big Oak wanted to shout, yes, but he didn't have to. Big Girl stood and announced, of course he does. Now it's time for me to let go and become the person God made me to be. Big Girl smiled. She placed the acorn in her pocket and began walking away. But after a few steps, she stopped and turned. She looked at the swing at the treehouse. She looked at Big Oak. She walked over to him and placed a hand on his trunk, and without a word, she said goodbye. And without a word, Big Oak said the same. So now that girl, she's going to go out and be the person God made her to be. And as you go out from kindergarten, even in your little tiny bodies, I see great things that God is doing in you. And I want you to be the person that God made you to be with your talents and your gifts. He gave them to you for a very strong and specific purpose. And he's got some kingdom jobs for you to do. So be the person God made you to be. And remember, you're always welcome back in my classroom. And I would love to see your little faces. So with that, I love you. Keep growing and keep trusting that God has big plans for you.